Jefferson Pilot Sports presents the best in regional college basketball, the Southeastern Conference. Today's game is brought to you by BP Super 93 Gasoline, BP's best choice in quality gasoline. By the Jefferson Pilot Life Insurance Company, the vision to power your dreams. By CarQuest Auto Parts. For the CarQuest store nearest you, call 1-800-492-PART. And by the new Gillette Sensor XL, with micro fins that set up your beard for the world's best shave. From Thompson Bowling Arena, Knoxville, Tennessee, it's Southeastern Conference Basketball. Tonight, the Kentucky Wildcats meet the Tennessee Volunteers. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Knoxville. Thompson Bowling Arena sold out tonight. Nearly 25,000 fans here for the game. Thanks to the invasion of the Kentucky Wildcat Rooters, there will be a lot of blue in this arena tonight, dueling blue and orange in the stands as well as on the court. Tom Hammond joined by Jodine Jr. for tonight's broadcast. Joe, Kentucky is on a roll, ranked as high as third in one of the polls, and uh, they've just been playing outstanding basketball. But going all the way back to the days of Adolph Rupp, when you come to Knoxville, it's a different story. Well, Tom, history tells us that Kentucky always struggles here in Knoxville. Of the last 21 times they played here, they have lost 16 of those games. The five games they won, four of those games were decided by four points or less. Forget the records when they play here in Knoxville. Well, Kentucky won the earlier meeting at Rupp Arena by 19 points, causing Tennessee all kinds of trouble with their press. So Tennessee is starting an extremely small lineup tonight. Well, they are, and, and they're starting the lineup mainly for the turnovers. 27 turnovers in Rupp Arena two weeks ago. They've got to cut that down. But these three young men collectively only shoot 36% from the floor. They have got to shoot a higher percentage tonight to have a chance to beat the Kentucky Wildcats. Should be some fireworks tonight. The Wildcats involved. Volunteers will return with a starting lineup in just a moment. Welcome back to Knoxville, where the Kentucky Wildcats, 15 and 3 overall, 8 and 1 in the conference, take on the Tennessee Vols, 8 and 10, 2 and 7 in SEC play. Here's the starting lineup for Kentucky. Rhodes had a career high 29 in the first meeting with Tennessee, which put him over 1,000 for his career. McCarty's been one of the most consistent cats, averaging 10 points, 5 boards a game. Riddick's shot blocking ability will be tested against Steve Hamer tonight. Delk, Kentucky's top scorer, 16 a game, needs only five to join the 1,000-point club. And Shepard starts for the 13th time, been somewhat inconsistent at point guard. Rick Pitino's locked in more than one battle with Tennessee. The other is over the recruitment of high school star Ron Mercer, who incidentally plays in Frankfort, Kentucky on Saturday night. Pitino assures everyone he will not go to the locker room. Starting lineup for the Volunteers. Johnson, though he's listed as a forward, leads the balls in assists. Seven-footer Hamer quietly having an outstanding year. He's the SEC's number five scorer, 16 a game, and number one rebounder at nine a contest. Then the three-guard lineup, freshman dunk, a six-footer, great name, isn't it? Started one other time. That was at Rupp Arena, and he didn't score. Carnes, six-foot-one, another freshman, averages nine points a game. And Williams, a six-footer, hits for eight a contest. Kevin O'Neill is struggling in his first season, but he earns high marks for courage. He does a live post-game call-in show, which can get a little heated at times. By the way, when someone asked if this was his small lineup, he said, nope, it's the miniature lineup. Volunteers tackle the Wildcats and will return for the opening tip-off right after these messages. Welcome back to Knoxville, Tennessee, the Thompson Bowling Arena for Kentucky and Tennessee. Kentucky with an all-time lead in the series of substantial proportions, but in Knoxville, the Vols have a one-game edge. Kentucky has won eight of the last ten overall against the Volunteers. And Steve Hamer controls the opening tap. Don Rutledge, Andre Patillo, Mike Wood, the officials for tonight's game. Well, as expected, Kentucky starts in the man-to-man. -man. You'll see that throughout the game with a lot of full-court pressing to go with it. Volunteers, a low-scoring team. In fact, they want to hold the score down as much as possible, and they open up with a bucket by Damon Johnson. Well, that's a big key for the perimeter of Tennessee to make outside shots tonight. Good start by Johnson. Tennessee started man-to-man -man as we expected. Roderick Rhodes off that 29-point effort against the balls earlier. Misses the shot, and McCarty fouls getting the rebound. 
Well, Tom, the big concern, obviously, with, as you said, the miniature lineup of Kevin O'Neill is the ability to rebound, miss shots. Good start for Tennessee. Volunteers with the basketball, leading by a deuce in the opening minute of the game. Volunteers with the three-guard lineup without their second leading scorer on the season. Kevin Whitted, the 6'9 forward, who averages 11 a game. Johnson against McCarty got a screen from Hamer. Shot clock is to seven. Johnson got it away, but couldn't hit it. Hamer, the offensive board. Riddick took it away from him, but out of bounds. Last touch by Walter McCarty of Kentucky. Well, Tennessee offensively is going to try to control the tempo tonight. Here you see Johnson on the jump shot and a big offensive rebound by Hamer. Obviously the only big guy inside for Tennessee, so that's a good sign for Kevin O'Neill that he can go in there and get an offensive rebound. But Hamer is down, and as I watched the replay, Joe, I couldn't really see what had happened to him. He's holding his right knee, and boy, the loss of Hamer would just about do in the Volunteers. You're right, Tom. That, that would really be devastating if Hamer had to go out of the game. Hopefully he's not hurt bad. Here's the replay. You see the shot. Let's see if we can tell what happened to him. Looks like his leg buckled under him. His left left leg, I believe, is the one he's concerned about. Hard to tell, but it looked like his left ankle buckled under him. And he is holding his left. Yes, he is holding his left leg and could have been hyperextended somewhat. Trainers looking at him now. He is flexing it back and forth, as you see, which is a good sign. And Sometimes, sometimes the uh, initial blow is effective. And look at Rick Pitino there showing some concern for Steve Hamer. That's a nice, nice piece of sportsmanship there by the Kentucky coach. Reminiscent of a concern Nolan Richardson uh, had shown when Randy Livingston of LSU was injured. That's exactly right. You know, it's, it's important to remember that it, you know, it is just a game and that the, these are college age young men playing and certainly everybody wants to win, but when a young man's hurt, we all have to be concerned. Hamer, of course, really coming into his own in this his junior season. 16 points, nine boards a game, was SEC Player of the Week, and one week back in January, had been putting up double doubles with regularity. Tied for the league lead in rebounding and in the top five in scoring. One of the things I've noticed, the trainers really have not put their hands around his knee, which tells me that maybe it was. Uh, not quite as serious as we thought. I, I hope that's the case, although it looks like they're going to help him off. Well, Steve has had a history of tendonitis problems in his knees all throughout his career at Tennessee, so perhaps it's uh, the recurrence of an older problem because there didn't appear to be any trauma associated with the injury that time we can see on the replay. So Kevin Whitted will enter the game replacing Steve Hamer. Averaging 11 points, four rebounds a game. He's a senior. That's a tough blow for Tennessee, Tom, but these Tennessee players are going to have to just rally around Kevin Whitted and see if they can continue to control tempo in this game. And, and the key for tonight for Tennessee, got to make a high percentage of outside shots because they're not going to get a lot of looks inside. So play resumes with Steve Hamer having gone to the sideline and apparently uh, heading already toward the locker room. Question for Tennessee is now where do you look for scoring? Inside taken away by Tony Dell. Here's Riddick, guarded by Whitted. Gave it up to McCarty. Tony Dell. Back rim, picked up on the fly by Carnes. Whitted take the shot, trying to pass it, was deflected and intercepted. Well, not the area of the floor that Whitted is most comfortable with, obviously. He needs to get it out to a guard and stay in that motion offense. Rhodes can't hit. He's 0 for 2. 
And Kentucky still doesn't have a basket in the first two and a half minutes. Aliko Dunk is trying to guard Roderick Rhodes at six foot seven. Johnson just threw it right to Shepard. Numbers Kentucky. McCarty back to Delk as the Tennessee defense recovers in a hurry. Good job of getting back defensively, stopping the basketball. Tennessee plays excellent half-court man-to-man defense, second in the SEC in scoring. Johnson slaps it away from Walter McCarty. Well, here you see what Kentucky's going to try to do inside right here to Walter McCarty. It's like he may have gotten him on the arm. Tennessee got away with one. Kentucky still looking for his first basket. Played two minutes, 45 seconds. Shepard for three. Bounced three times, came out. Hope with an offensive board. He just replaced Riddick. Here's Rhodes inside. Turns and draws the foul. First foul on Tennessee. Well, obviously, with Lico Dunk, number 12 there at six feet, Trying to guard 6'7", Rod Rhodes inside in the motion offense. Kentucky is going to post up Rhodes at every opportunity. He gets position in the post and just simply uses his height advantage over the six-foot dunk to get the shot and draw the foul. Rhodes is fifth in the conference at the uh, free throw line in percentage, about 78%. Play for the Wildcats has been a wealth chronicle, but he did have an outstanding effort against the Volunteers at Rupp Arena. It's one of two. Tennessee still has the lead. Here comes that full court Kentucky pressure. And for the fourth straight time, Tennessee turns it over. Four straight possessions, Tennessee has turned it over. That was a 10 second count. That's exactly right. I thought they might have called a, called a timeout there, but it was a 10 second call by Andre Patillo. And again, you're going to see that all night tonight for Kentucky. The full court matchup press looking to trap the basketball and force turnover. Hope against Whitted. Muscles inside and Whitted got a piece. Hope got it back and scored. Great size, great power inside by Kentucky. Into the pressure. Whitted takes it all the way. Great job by Tennessee, the best way to attack full court pressure, get it in the middle of the floor and drive it to the basket. I think Kentucky had a breakdown that time defensively to let Wade get open. Johnson slapped it away from McCarty, but Delk is able to save it. Tennessee by one. Wildcats kick it out of bounds. First Kentucky turnover as Delk bounced it off his foot. Now there you see that Rhodes went for the steal and missed it and allowed Whitted to take it all the way to the basket against the full court pressure and laid it in. Nice play, Tennessee. Here's Jared Prickett making his first appearance in the Kentucky lineup as McCarty goes out. He played four minutes. There's not been a field goal since Steve Hamer left the game with that knee injury. Tennessee's got to handle the ball well, take care of it. 27 turnovers in Rupp Arena two weeks ago. Can't have that here tonight, have a chance to upset Kentucky. Again, Tennessee looking for his first field goal since Hamer left. Kentucky really guarding against the three-point shots. They're going to give Tennessee anything they want inside. Laid in by Johnson. He has four points. Actually, they did have a field goal because Whitted does uh, scored off the press. That's so, exactly right. So they actually did have one since Hamer left. And now they have a three-point lead. Delk double-teamed his foul. Uh, you can see what Kentucky's trying to do. They're going right at the freshman, Aliko Dunk. Not the, doesn't have the experience in a game like this. He's only six feet. And Tony Delk at 6'2", much more athletic, posts him up and just simply turns. He's going to use his size advantage and draws the foul. And Dunk will have to go to the bench with two quick fouls. He is replaced by Jason Moore, a 6'2 freshman from Franklin, Tennessee playing in only his 11th game of the season. I thought we might see Jason Moore a little bit tonight, Tom. He, uh, two games ago against Alabama, hit three three-point baskets. He's an excellent shooter, just a freshman, but uh, could be a guy that can come in here tonight and maybe throw in some three-pointers. Delk hits two, pulling the Wildcats within a deuce. 15-18 left, first half. Tennessee now with a one-point lead. Doubleheader for you this Saturday on most of these SEC stations starting at 1 Eastern Time, noon Central.
These volunteers will travel to Athens to meet the Georgia Bulldogs. And the second game matching Arkansas and Nashville against Vanderbilt. SEC doubleheader action this Saturday on most of these stations. One point game, Tennessee facing the full court pressure. Delk slaps it away from Johnson. Delk and the Wildcats hitting just one of their first six shots. That's 17%. Tennessee's hit three of four shots. The problem is they have four turnovers. And this pressure is relentless. Here they go, two on one situation. Cards cut off. Moore passed up the shot. Three pointer by Williams. Great job by Johnson penetrating the lane against half court pressure defense and kicking outside for the three point shot. That's the best way for Tennessee to open up some perimeter shots. Volunteers' biggest lead. Three-pointer by Rhodes. Brickett muscles it up and in. Well, size advantage time at 6-9 over 6-4. Just not much Damon Johnson could do in that situation. Tennessee running a five-man motion offense. They've got the floor spread. Trying to find creases in the man-to-man -man defense to penetrate and kick to a teammate for an open jump shot. Johnson foul. Penetration move by Damon Johnson results in a Kentucky foul. And really, that's the only way that Tennessee is going to be able to get inside tonight, to take it on the dribble, attack the basket, try to find kickoff opportunities or pitch it out for three-point shots. Damon Johnson leads this Tennessee team in assists, and nice job of driving to the basket that time. Rhodes committed his first foul. McCarty back in for Prickett. Foul on Rhodes. That's two fouls in the space of two seconds. So the pressure is just uh, relentless by Kentucky because they're in such good condition. Here you see Rhodes reaching for the ball. They they do a lot of that. They like to gamble, try to get steals, as Coach Patino calls them, deflections. He'll actually keep that statistic, how many deflections his team gets in the course of the game. Well, Rhodes will be deflected to the bench, as Patino's rule is. Two first half fouls, you go out. And inside, Whitted got the roll. And again, the penetration drew the Kentucky double team and allowed Kevin Winnett on the roll to get open in the lane. Offensive foul called on the Wildcats. It's three on Roderick Rhodes. They couldn't get him out fast enough. Prickett was already at the scorer's table, but there wasn't a dead ball. And so Rhodes, who had 29 at Rupp Arena, leaves with three first half fouls. That is a key, key play for Kentucky. Rhodes out of the game, having 29 in the game with Tennessee earlier. But I'll tell you, Kentucky just brings them in in waves. They're so deep, so many talented players, and they're all in great condition. And what does O'Neill say about his bench? <laughs> Kevin O'Neill says when he looks at his bench, he feels like he's at a video store on Saturday night. Not many choices. <laughs> and even less with Steve Hamer now injured and out of the game. That's exactly right. Three point shot is there for Shane Carnes. His first pass. And Tom, that's the key for Tennessee. I've said it early. I'll probably say it a lot tonight. I hope I don't sound redundant because if Tennessee can get hot from the outside, they'll have a chance as McCarty knocks down his three. McCarty answers for the Wildcats and the lead cut back to four as we just come under the 13-minute mark. Off Johnson. Dell knocked it off Johnson. That's the fifth Tennessee turnover. Another deflection for Kentucky. Delk reaches in, knocks it off of the Tennessee player. Those are the kind of things that Patino teaches in his pressure defense. Use your hands. Probably got away with a foul right there. You see Damon Johnson complaining about it, but nevertheless, Kentucky gets another turnover. Oh, double team. Can't score. Taps once. No good. Got it back. Up again. Good. Tom, he traveled there. The Tennessee bench is irate. He got the ball in the air, came down with it twice. But uh, Mark Pope, good job in the offensive class. With it, cut off by Pope. Good ball movement by Tennessee. Yes, 
side with it. Blocked. McCarty from the weak side on the rejection. Number 21 for him this season. Great effort. Kentucky looks to tie the game. Cricket. Game tied at 14. Timeout taken with 11.58 left in the first half. 22nd timeout as Kentucky is in the middle of a 7-0 run. Well, Damon Johnson at 6-4 just cannot handle 6-9 Jared Prickett. Prickett knows that. He just turns, squares his shoulders, and shows the soft touch as it bounces around the rim and goes in. Damon Johnson, when this game is over, is going to feel like he's been in a heavyweight prize fight. His arms are going to be sore from trying to guard those big Kentucky players down low. Kentucky pounding it inside almost every possession with that superior uh, size advantage, which doesn't often happen for the Wildcats, actually. A week from tonight, we'll have further SEC action for you. Alabama hosting Arkansas, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central Time. Others will see Tennessee take on Florida. Check your local listings for the game in your area. Here comes the trap. Johnson just throws it away. Pope will chase it down for Kentucky. Half a dozen Tennessee turnovers. Anthony Epps in at the point for the Wildcats, replacing Shepard. Cricket tapped in by Pope. Six points for Mark Pope. It's a two-point game, Kentucky's way. You can see Damon Johnson is already tired right now, time number four. Well, he's working so hard on the big guy for Kentucky, just wearing him out already. Left wide open, Williams can't hit, and McCarty has it in a hurry for the Wildcats. They definitely want to pick up the pace and get a faster tempo. Tennessee wants to slow it down and minimize possessions. Kentucky averages 68 shot attempts a game. Tennessee only averages 52 shot attempts a game. You can see what each team's style likes to be. Kentucky already has put it up 15 times. And a Tennessee foul on Shane Carnes. Third foul against the Volunteers, number one on Carnes. And here is Dunk returning for the Volunteers, giving Damon Johnson that rest you said he needed. Well, no question about it. At six foot four, he's playing power forward. So he's having to guard Prickett at six nine, McCarty at six nine, and uh, just can't possibly do it. Kevin O'Neill's over there really encouraging Damon Johnson. Good job by Kevin O'Neill on the side. In fact, six four might be a stretch for Damon. Uh, Kevin O'Neill said in the paper this morning, David says he's 6'4", he's really about 6'2 and a half. The thing about Kevin O'Neill, he tells it like it is. McCarty hits one of two, and we'll take a timeout with 10.46 left. Three-point Kentucky lead. Back after this from Carquest Auto Parts. Kentucky trailed early, but they have taken a three-point lead, 17-14 on Tennessee. Roderick Rhodes on the bench with three early fouls for the Wildcats, yet they have come on to take the lead. And for Tennessee, Damon Johnson getting a rest on the uh, volunteer bench. Steve Hamer, leading scorer and rebounder for the Volunteers, sprained his left knee early in the game and will not return, although they don't think it's extremely serious, but will not return for this game. So what was already a Herculean task for the Volunteers has become very, very difficult. Well, again, so far, Tennessee's done a good job of controlling tempo. But they've got to get away, away from this tenacious defense and find some open outside shots. Reach-in foul committed by Anthony Epps of Kentucky. And you see there what Aliko Dunk's trying to do offensively as Tennessee spreads the floor, tries to big, the, bring the big players from Kentucky out away from the basket so they can drive to the lane and make some things happen. Those offensive rebounds have been key to the Wildcats getting the lead as evidenced by the second chance points, 11 nothing. That foul, by the way, was not on Epps, but on Walter McCarty, his second, and he leaves the game, replaced by Antoine Walker. Go, go, go. 
Prickett in close, and Kentucky has scored 12 straight points over the last four minutes plus. And just going inside every time down the floor now, taking advantage of their size. Another turnover. The Volunteers just cannot handle the pressure defense. Seven turnovers for O'Neal's club. Well, here you see Aliko Dunk is just no way. At six feet, it's impossible. He cannot possibly guard Jared Prickett inside. Kentucky doing the smart thing, pounding it in all night long. Tennessee play without its inside presence. Shot blocker Steve Hamer, who has taken his 16 points and nine rebounds to the locker room with a strained knee. David Johnson reached in to knock it away, but Kentucky gets it back. Delk spins, reverses, couldn't get it. And a pushing foul inside on the rebound on Kentucky. You know, a lot of fans might say, why doesn't Tennessee zone in a situation like this? And Tom, the main reason is that by playing man-to-man, -man, they have block out responsibility man for man on Kentucky. The offensive rebounding is a big key for Kentucky. Tennessee's got to try to uh, uh, do away with that in the man-to-man -man defense with the block out is the way to do it. Antoine Walker committing a foul. That's six against Kentucky, so a bit of good news for the Volunteers. They'll have the bonus for the rest of the half. Moore had the three-point shot up over the backboard out of bounds to the Wildcats. It's still a 12-0 Kentucky run. Antoine Walker, good job contesting Moore's shot, but Jason Moore's got to set up outside and try to take some three-point shots and hope that they can go, go in to give Tennessee some offensive relief. One of the worst three-point shooting teams in the conference tonight. 34.1, Kentucky promptly tosses it out of bounds. So watch things this. getting a little sloppy. Excuse me, Tom, let's watch this full court pressure. It's a, it's a matchup press. Kentucky will trap on the dribble, play a zone, and then back to man-to-man -to -man in the half court area. One of the few successful solvings of the press for the Volunteers. Quitted, flashes it right back outside, but the Kentucky defense recovers. Nice. Johnson, good ball fake, got a 15 footer. You're right, Tom, excellent ball fake, got the Kentucky defender off his feet, one bounce, and the little 10 foot jump. David Johnson has six points, the Volunteers back within three. Walker, again the size advantage, Walker at six foot eight, guarded by the six foot dunk. Kentucky just going si to simply try to wear Tennessee down physically here tonight with depth and pressure all night long. Johnson guarded by Frickett. Off a screen just inside the arc. Shane Williams. Five points for Williams. Tennessee keeping pace with two straight buckets. A three-pointer by Tony Dell, the Tennessee native. And Kentucky has hit six of its last nine shots. Most of those being inside. Easier to get into your press off a made field goal, too, and that's why the pressure is so tough. Tennessee will control the tempo. Every possession, they'll run the shot clock down inside of 10. Johnson pulls up too hard off the glass, claimed by Walker. One shot and out for Tennessee. Just doesn't have the size to battle on the offensive board. Hope for three. Williams will slow it down. That's another thing, too, Kentucky had been hitting, which gives them a chance to set up that press. Exactly right. He's on a missed shot that can get the rebound and get it on down the floor. Tell you what, Tom, the pressure and, and the work ethic in Kentucky is very impressive. Shot clock to three, Look scramble in the backcourt, Epps right. took it away, gave it to Walker for the jam. Oh, Anthony Epps, what a play. No question, credit Anthony Epps, 
The box score will not show that play tomorrow morning. Rick Pitino will praise him wholeheartedly at the end of the game here tonight. Great play hustle-wise, Anthony Epps. Epps, you'll remember if you're a Kentucky fan, got the start when Travis Ford was suspended after the free throw incident. Epps got the start here at Tennessee last season and played very well. In fact, had two key three pointers and was player of the game for the way he ran the offense. Johnson with a spin and a foul. Mark Pope of Kentucky, or Jared Cricket, one of the two. Coach Patino didn't like that call. He's challenged his big guys here tonight to guard the smaller, quicker Tennessee perimeter. He's told them that, you know, if you're going to ever play at the next level, you've got to be able to go out on the floor and guard defensively and shut down penetration by quicker players. So you can see Prickett and Walker and McCarty really challenged by that when they go out on the floor defensively. Dunk has gone out for Tennessee to get a rest as Johnson sinks the first free throw. I'll tell you, poor David Johnson, he, he just looks like he's just gone about 10 rounds with... <laughs> with uh, George Foreman. <laughs> he has uh, seven points and five turnovers. Prickett with a rebound. Tennessee has Clint Newman in the game. 6'2 sophomore, former walk-on. Has played in only two games prior to the Epps for three. I think he likes this place. No question. Steady point guard off the bench. Kentucky's biggest lead. Kentucky doesn't, doesn't fear pressing Tennessee because they know at the other end, Tennessee probably going to set up and run an offense, bring the shot clock down. Three-pointer on its way and good by Shane Carnes. Barnes has a pair of trays, cuts the lead to seven. As the T-shirts go flying into the stand. Epps to answer. Good gracious. Back-to-back trays. Incredible. Kentucky has seven players who have taken over 23-point attempts this year, which is absolutely unbelievable. Epps one of those seven. Get in there, fucking press! Get in the press! Get in the press! Get in the press! Get in the press! Johnson fake brick it off his feet but couldn't get the shot away. That one missed by Newman and rebounded by Kentucky. Reddick made the catch in traffic, got control, and put it home. Great play by Reddick. Barnes was right there to double team, but Reddick got it off the floor and jumped up and laid it in quickly. And Tennessee will take a timeout, and Kevin O'Neill is not happy. 4.05 left in the opening half. Kentucky has built a 12-point lead. That's a truck. My girlfriend loves the new inside. Now all she wants to do is ride. Mom sees the airbag and takes heart. Finally, her boy's getting smart. My best friend pops the hood. Look for horsepower. That's good. Well, my boss says it takes the cake. A truck with an airlock brakes. Oh, yeah, my, my Ford range is really hot stuff. Now Dad asks, can I borrow the truck? The Football Hall of Fame. The pigskin palace. The house of helmets. The Shangri-La of shin pads. You all set, Mr. Ready to worship? Yeah. Wait, there's a McDonald's. Well, Jerry, the temple of touchdowns awaits. The yeah, episode is 95 cent double cheeseburgers. Sizzling hot beef. Beef. Melted cheese. You know me and cheese. You love cheese. Right now, McDonald's famous original double cheeseburger and morning fresh sausage McMuffin with egg are only 95 cents each, but only for a limited time, so hurry. But they're not going anywhere. Are you kidding? They're made of bronze. Here's a look at an MCI proof positive replay. 
Well, the great pressure defense by Kentucky. They worked so hard. Anthony Epps dives for that ball. Excellent hustle play. And then he runs the toss sweep. And here comes Antoine Walker down the field. Touchdown, Kentucky. <laughs> and then Epps promptly hit back-to-back -back three pointers. So returning to the scene of the game, which really gained the confidence of Rick Patino last year when he took the undermanned Wildcats to victory here at Thompson Bowling Arena. Well, Rick Patino's got 10 guys who can intermix with each other and give him great talent on the floor. And I think that's why they have a chance to go all the way to the Final Four time. Great depth. A lot of talent coming off the bench. Right now they lead scoring off the bench 22 to 4 over Tennessee. Moore's in trouble. Chris Harrison was all over him in the five second count. We'll turn it over. That's 10 Tennessee turnovers here in the first half. 348 left. We'll take a timeout here with Kentucky up 34-22 on the Volunteers. Tennessee had the early edge, but after Steve Hamer left the game, Kentucky with its numbers and size steadily took advantage. And there's that bench scoring stat you were talking about overwhelmingly in favor of the Wildcats. Well, when you can come off the bench with players like Anthony Epps and Jared Prickett, Mark Pope, people like that. I tell you, it's uh, it's tough for the opposition. And again, I think that's why Kentucky is a serious threat to get to the Final Four. They just have so much, so many weapons. Kentucky's hit 11 of its last 16 shots. Shepard attempted to lob it to Walker. Ball out of bounds, turn it over to the Volunteers. Hard to get a complete alive from that far out on the floor. Really, probably should take it down a little bit farther on the wing to get it inside. Walker with a hand check is called for the personal foul. Second on Antoine Walker, the freshman from Chicago. Well, obviously that helps Tennessee because now they can walk 94 feet to the other end and go to the free throw line, hopefully to get a couple of easy points for them. Chris Harrison takes a seat. And also coming in for the first time will be Alan Edwards. Six-four freshman guard from Miami. Miami Senior High School, Shaky Rodriguez, a great program down in South Florida. Won back-to-back -back state championships down there. Here's Shane Carnes. This is the free throw, and Cricket has it for the Wildcats. Well, that hurts Tennessee badly right there. Riddick spinning. Prickett with a cross court to Edwards, whips it to Riddick inside. Good ball move for the Wildcats, they haven't gotten a shot yet. Johnson called for a reach in on Jared Prickett, his first foul. Tom, you're right, the ball movement was outstanding. Went from side to side, and obviously trying to get the ball to the big guy inside, the mismatch, and all Johnson can do is try to reach down low because he can't contest up high. So by going down low, he either gets ball or gets the foul. Official calling for the foul. Prickett, the West Virginia junior, has seven points, four rebounds, and two assists. Off to a good start from the Wildcats. Then, this is the second free throw. The press on a missed free throw. Relentless. An open three-pointer rims out for Carnes, and Shepard takes it the other way. Inside the three-minute mark, first half. Edwards fake the shot, now I'll take it. Pretty move. Beautiful move. Just a little pump fake from the three-point line, one bounce, used the glass, just like he did at Miami Senior. Lead steadily mounting for the Wildcats. Tennessee playing without leading scorer and rebounder, the seven-footer Steve Hamer. And you're really right. undermanned. You're really, you're right, Tom. And I thought with Steve Hamer in the game, Tennessee might have a chance to pull an upset here, and they still might come back. But realistically, it's going to be very difficult without Hamer. And lead some of that outside shot by Shane Williams. Now well, they got to get red hot because they're just not going to get much inside. Riddick will shoot two. 
Kevin Whitted called for the foul. It's his first. And Kevin O'Neill's not happy about that simply because he's trying to control tempo, and, and the defense that time allowed Kentucky to throw it one pass down the side and in real quick. And uh, his defense needs to tighten up and not allow that easy of an entry into the low post. Riddick misses the free throw. His ongoing battle at the stripe has been uh, well chronicled. He's at 54% this season. Every free throw is an adventure. Hold for two. He has two points. Kentucky overall has hit only five of ten at the free throw stripe. Free throw stripe. Normally, they're over 70%. Look at this defense. I mean, Tennessee just can't get an open look. Edwards might have gotten away Great with the foul. Great double team by, by Prickett. They got it away from Whitted. One thirty left. Kentucky into their motion. Gonna post somebody up. Seven Kentucky steals. Dell double pop got the roll. Tony Dell really tough. Maybe the best guard in the SEC. Seven points for him. the first half. Williams missed everything. Prickett has it. Edwards back to Delt for three. Back rim to Tennessee. Balls can hold for virtually the final shot, just about a one second differential between the shot and the game clock. All the Tennessee players have their hands down on their shorts, really, been really worn out. Pressure from Kentucky is taking its toll. How bad are things for O'Neill with Hamer gone? Well, Clint Newman, who had played in only two prior games, saw first half action tonight. Final second, six tenths of a second left as the ball goes out of bounds. Well, that'll count as an offensive rebound for Tennessee, but it's it's a team rebound because Kentucky knocked it out. Catch and shoot, Johnson does. Oh, rimmed out. So the first half will come to a close, an uphill battle for Kevin O'Neill and the Volunteers after Steve Hamer left the game with a sprained left knee. Wildcats trailed early, but take command, shooting 68% over the last 15 minutes of the half. At intermission, it's Kentucky 39, Tennessee 24. Today's SEC action is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Purnell Old Folks Country Sausage, because it's good. By DirecTV. Stay tuned at halftime when Dick Vitale presents the DirecTV Dish Out the Winner Sweepstakes. And by Pizza Hut. You'll love the stuff we're made of. Now it's time for our Reese's SEC Plays of the Week. Our Nutrageous Finish of the Week is brought to you by Nutrageous Candy Bar. Give your mouth a party. Regardless of the sport, the Alabama-Auburn game is always a classic. Play of the Week is brought to you by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. There's no wrong way to eat a Reese's. Arkansas's Alex Dillard shows Mississippi State that there is no limit to his shooting range. Let's take another look. Dillard, way out beyond the NBA three-point range. It's nothing but net. And that's our Play of the Week. Halftime, the Thompson Bowling Arena. Some of the steam out of this big crowd after the injury to Steve Hamer early. It's hard to tell by the halftime margin. Kentucky up 15, but Tennessee actually had 
a seven point lead in the game. It came with 13 15 left in the half. But with Hamer leaving, playing only a minute and 15 seconds before spraining his knee, it was an uphill battle for the Volunteers. Joe, what can Kevin O'Neill possibly do in the absence of Hamer just totally undermanned now? Well, I think defensively he's got to do something about the inside presence of Kentucky. He's got to jam the low post more. And, you know, as much as you hate to say, try to force Kentucky to shoot more three-point shots, but they're one of the best three-point shooting teams in America. Yeah, and Kentucky went on a tear there the last stages of that first half as we hit sitting hitting 68 percent over the last 15 minutes of that first half hitting 56 percent overall through the first 20 minutes of play well it's time now for the chrysler plymouth championship challenge call toll free 1-800-514-hoops to vote for the teams you think will win the sec eastern and western division titles contest winner will be selected from all correct entries based on a random drawing and will receive a VIP trip for two to the 1995 Direct TV Grade 8 tournament at the Palace of Auburn Hills. Voting ends February 11th and the winner will be announced during our SEC tournament coverage in March. And atop your East Division standings, you might want to pencil in the Wildcats. Looking awfully good at this point. No question about it. I think Kentucky has pretty much got the Eastern Division crown wrapped up. And the, the key now is can they win the overall championship because the best record overall will be the regular season champions. You see Mississippi State at 6-2. and two. They have to go to Rupp Arena next week, so that'll be a key game in the SEC race. That SEC uh, West loaded with outstanding teams, and that is going to be a battle right to the final games of the season. Mississippi State in the loss column, one game up on Alabama and LSU. Arkansas just at 6-4, and four, the preseason favorite. We're at halftime in Knoxville. Kentucky leads Tennessee by 15. We'll be right back. Well, that's right. Steve Hamer on the offensive rebound goes up to get the ball and comes down. And as you see, his left leg buckles right under him, his foot and then his knee. And he goes down grimacing in pain. And he's out for, the, for tonight, hopefully not for any more games after tonight. So it's a tough task for the Volunteers. As we start the second half, they trail Kentucky by 15. Jefferson Pilot Sports exclusive coverage of SEC basketball is brought to you by Nationwide Insurance. Check the yellow pages for the Nationwide agent nearest you. By Plymouth Neon. Say hello to the frisky new Plymouth Neon Sports Coupe. By BC Powder. No matter where you're hurting, nothing works faster than BC Powder. By Direct TV, sponsor of the Direct TV Grade 8. And by MCI, the company that brings you proof positive. Welcome back to Knoxville, the Thompson Bowling Arena. Ready to start the second half. Kentucky up on Tennessee, 39-24. Kentucky getting 25 of its 39 points off the bench. That's one more than Tennessee's entire total in the first half. That's amazing. Tennessee starts back man to man. Shepard penetrates, kicks it back out. Roderick Rhodes starts the second half. Remember, he picked up three quick fouls and went to the bench early. McCarty explodes to the basket. Knocked out of bounds by Rhodes. Further word on Steve Hamer's injury. We're told now that he dislocated his left kneecap. He came down sort of stiff-legged and dislocated his left kneecap. Will not return tonight. And no word yet on how long he might be out. Open shot for Johnson. Well, nice little two-man play there by Williams and Johnson. An on-ball screen by Johnson. He just popped back and got the open shot. Delk misses a three. Rebounded by a dunk. Johnson looking for Whitted. Carnes threw it away right through the hands of Damon Johnson. Well, another turnover, but you see what Tennessee's trying to do offensively. Spread the floor, run a motion offense, and use the dribble to, to close up that Kentucky defense so Tennessee can pitch out to the perimeter for an open shot. Shepard sits with Epps coming in to run the team now. Epps had a nice first half. Yeah, Epps is a fine player, Tom. Very steady, gives some good offense and defense. 
can knock down threes. Excellent guy off the bench as, as a point guard. Mark Pope has eight points. Now you see Pope again inside. Look at, he uses the elbow to get around Johnson on the spin move. Good quickness for a big 6'9 guy. But Kevin O'Neill appreciated the hook quite as much as you did. <laughs> Mark Pope. He's letting the officials know about it. Don Rutledge right in front of him. Knocked away by McCarty, but Tennessee recovers. Carnes for three. Carnes is the best three-point shooter for Tennessee, right at 39%. For them to have a chance, he's got to get hot, as you see Steve Hamer back on the bench to give Tennessee some inspirational lifts. And a 20-second timeout is called. Shane Carnes has hit all three of his trays tonight as Steve Hamer takes a seat on the bench. Interesting, we were talking uh, when he was initially injured about Rick Pitino walking over and taking a look, showing his concern. And we're told that just before the second half started, Pitino made a walk down to the Tennessee bench to inquire as to the status of Steve Hamer. Coming up on Saturday, a doubleheader for you. Most of these SEC stations starting at 1 o'clock Eastern, noon Central Time. Tennessee and Georgia will tip it off, followed by Arkansas and Vanderbilt. Coming your way are most of these Jefferson Pilot SEC stations. Well, just a little short of capacity here at Thompson Bowling tonight. They thought they had sold all the tickets. Maybe they didn't all show up. 20,118. Or uh, excuse me, Dell knocked down as he sinks the tray and will have a chance for one of those rare four-point plays. Tony Delk is so good out on the perimeter. He's looking for his three all the time, and he jumps up. Cardinal Sin in, on defense. Don't foul a jump shooter. Damon Johnson runs into him, got his momentum, carried him in to Tony Delk, and Tony will go to the line for a four-point play. 11 in the game for Tony Delk from Brownsville, Tennessee, western part of the state. Close to Memphis. Johnson trying to get away from McCarty. He's in there in the tall timber. It didn't matter. That's a good job by Johnson that time, using his athleticism in the lane over the big trees inside for the layup. 11 points for Damon Johnson. Three minutes gone by here in the second half. Now, good. Got away from everyone and couldn't finish it. McCarty misses in close on the floor. Taken by Tennessee. Carnes finally for the Volunteers. Tennessee has to scrap and fight and battle for every loose ball and every rebound to have a chance to make the comeback here. Pope cuts off with it, who had trouble catching the ball. And a three-pointer rattles through for Williams. Jane Williams has 10. Tennessee showing a few signs of life. They could just stop Kentucky or Kentucky stopping themselves the last two possessions. McCarty misses the jam. And then a Wildcat foul. Well, the high-low offense eliminates help defense in the lane, and that's why McCarty is so open. But you see, he just gets a little lazy on the dunk. And doesn't finish it off, and that'll draw the ear of Coach Rick Patino on the sideline. And the foul was on Roderick Rhodes. That's his fourth foul. Well, maybe it was Mark Pope the foul was on. So Mark Pope was the man that committed the foul. His second. So sorry about that mix up. As the Wildcats take a 20 second timeout. 16, 18 showing on the clock. And Joe, I guess it's uh, just human nature to sort of take things a little easy when you have a big lead and see the other man's top player go out. And Kentucky, uh, on a couple of occasions here lately, have had wide open shots that have not gone through. Well, that's exactly right. And I think Rick Pitino's talking to his players right now about that, that 
forget the scoreboard, pretend like it's zero to zero, and let's come out and fight and scratch defensively like we did in the first half. They did it that time in that possession. And I think one of the things you, you, you see with Rick Patino's teams is even though he's got great talent, he's got some high school All-Americans out here, they play extremely hard, and he uses the bench as a motivator for guys who aren't playing hard. Tennessee has not missed a shot here in the second half. And half of those were threes. Delk with a steal, knocked it to his teammate Rhodes, and the Wildcats come right back. Eight steals by Kentucky. That's a patented play by Rick Pitino's presses. The tap back from behind, Tony Delk running down the ball and getting the tap back. Jared Prickett called for a foul away from the ball. Excuse me, they called it on Jason Moore of Tennessee. And he'll go out. And Tennessee will get that one. Rhodes tried to quick pass inbounds, and they knocked it right back in his face. Right back in his lap, and he was standing there looking at the referee like, can I throw it in again? That'll be Mark Polk. And three on Polk. 15-58 left in the second half. Tennessee showing some signs of life. Our nationwide insurance SEC Scholar Athlete of the Week is Edric Bohannon of the Tennessee Volunteers. He's a sophomore from San Bernardino, California, currently sidelined by a stress fracture he suffered in January. He has a three-point in psychology, not a bad major to have on a Kevin O'Neill team. Edric Bohannon, University of Tennessee, our nationwide insurance SEC Scholar Athlete of the Week. Are you saying that Coach O'Neill needs some figuring out? <laughs> what about the time he tried to impress a recruit up at Marquette? This is the story you were telling me. Well, rumor has it that the recruit flew into Milwaukee one day, and Kevin O'Neill greeted him at the airport in a gorilla suit. <laughs> <laughs> Made a lasting impression? He said, I didn't want the kid to ever forget me. Did he come to Marquette? I don't know. <laughs> Many have likened him uh, to Ray Mears in some of his antics. The uh, very successful former ball coach that had many legendary battles with Adolph from Kentucky in general. Johnson made some space, missed the shot, Walker the rebound. One thing you know about Kevin O'Neill is he'll work hard and he knows how to win. He'll get this program going here at Tennessee. Cricket used the left hand. Jared Cricket's having a good game. That's nine points. Numbers, Tennessee. Nice. Cards to win it for the jam. Textbook way of playing two-on-one basketball on the fast break. Shane Carnes, beautiful job by the freshman. Well, let's see a rare Tennessee fast break. We haven't seen many tonight. Two-on-one, the bounce pass under the defense creates the easy layup for Tennessee. Whitted, who had the jam, comes back to commit his second foul, third team foul for the Volunteers. Nine Kentucky players have scored in the game, only four for Tennessee. Delk floater. Rebounded by McCarty, lost it on the way up. It'll go to Tennessee. A great hustle that time by Lisco Dunk. Again, with the big 6'9 guys in the lane, Rick Pitino, you can see there, said, Walter, don't bring the ball down to Aliko Dunk's size. He'll take it right away from you, as you see right there. And Dunks dives on the ball. Great hustle. Kevin O'Neill style. I was sure Damon Johnson wasn't the man that knocked it out of bounds. Rick Pitino just said to Walter McCarty, he said, you, you just became 5'11", Walter, when you took the ball down to Aliko Dunk. Always teaching, Rick Patino, great teacher of the game. Barnes may have walked. Johnson wide open. Maybe too wide open. It'll go to Kentucky. It'll go to Kentucky, knocked out of bounds by Damon Johnson. Okay, my hat's off to Damon Johnson. Here's a guy that's averaging 38 minutes a game. He's played 40 minutes a game 
in a number of games this year, and uh, I say he has played his heart out here this afternoon of the season. Johnson City, Tennessee, prepped at Science Hill High School, then went to Awasi Junior College before coming on to Knoxville to play his junior season. He played with Landers Motley from LSU at Hawassi Junior College. Great ball move with Kentucky and inside on the reversal. Walker, offensive foul. Well, that's all Aliko Junk can do. It's six foot, really actually 5'11". He's trying to guard 6'8", Antoine Walker. Maybe a little acting job, but he does the smart thing. Well, no, I think it was a good call. Walker dipped the shoulder in and dunk on the charge. Excellent defensive help from the weak side. Anytime you lower that shoulder, you're going to get called, and that's the third foul on Antoine. Come on, come on. Kentucky coach is very high on Antoine Walker, just a freshman. They think he's going to be a great player at Kentucky before he leaves. Here comes the double team. Williams tosses it finally in the front court. Spotted for the uh, three. Was Moore fumbled the pass, and then they ended up taking a bad shot. Rhodes was standing out of bounds. Roderick Rhodes is really having a subpar game. He only has one point, three fouls, and now three turnovers. There's not much you can say when a player is standing on the out-of-bounds line. I would call that a minimal mistake. And there wasn't another <laughs> player close to it. Nine Kentucky turnovers, 13 Tennessee. You can see handling the ball much better in the second half. With it, tough shot. Rebounded by Prickett, and he is fouled. Kevin Whitted, I believe it is. Three on Whitted. I'm amazed that Tennessee continues to hang around. Still 13 minutes to go and down 13 points. They just have played much better here in the second half, handling the ball better, not as many turnovers, only two so far here in the second half. And without that man on the bench, Steve Hamer. Take a stroke. Rhodes. You heard the slap as he made his move. That'll count, and he'll have a chance for the three-point play. Well, there you saw the elusiveness inside of Rod Rhodes. Great athlete. The up-and-under move. Dives to the basket and draws the foul. Great athlete with great athleticism here. A big step move toward the basket. Gets it on the glass, and that's the key when you're getting your arms fouled. Put it on that glass. Easy shot. And he does get the three-point play. The foul on Damon Johnson was his third. Kentucky always going for the passes, always trying to get their hands on balls. At the end of the year, Rick Pitino will give an award to the Kentucky player who has the most deflections in the course of the season. Quitted, takes up his dribble, but gives it. Back into the hands of Aliko Dunk, the guard, who threads his way into front court. Very important against this type of pressure, Tom, that you attack on the dribble. Dunk got away from the slower cricket, but couldn't finish it. Hardy faked the three. Johnson recovers quickly on Delk. Pulled up on the baseline. That's a pretty tough shot to stop. both feet and the ball across the half court line before it's an over and back. That's a rule that came in about three years ago. A lot of fans don't know that rule. Diagonal pass over to Williams for the open three. Prickett with another rebound. Tennessee's missed its last five shots. Rhodes for three. Prickett off the offensive glass. This great power and size and talent by Kentucky. They look for the three-pointers, throw it on the glass. The big guys go and get it and stick it back in. That's tough to defend. Kentucky has reeled off seven straight points to lead by 20 at the 11.52 mark. Here's a look at an MCI proof positive replay. Well, here you see Tony Delk on the baseline drive. Great body control here as he waits for Johnson to go by him. An excellent strength to muscle up a little 10-foot jumper, and that's the MCI proof positive play. Tony Delk, a junior out of Brownsville, Tennessee, and I think Tom may be the best guard in the SEC. 
Tom Hammond, Jodine Jr. from Thompson Bowling Arena. The announcers for this game selected and compensated by Jefferson Pilot Sports and the use of the broadcast without the express permission of the Southeastern Conference and Jefferson Pilot Sports is prohibited. Backcourt trap of Carnes muscled his way out of it. Dump. Johnson passes up a quick shot. Williams wide open from 15. at six straight Tennessee's miss. Johnson leads the ball, break three on two. Delk deflected it out of bounds. Tennessee working as hard as they can, Tom. A credit to Kevin O'Neill that he can keep these guys in the game with their size disadvantage. But they just don't have one really good score, a guy they can go to for when they really need a basket. And I know as both Kentucky and Tennessee fans look on here tonight, the guy over at Oak Hill Academy that both these schools would like to see playing at their respective teams next year. A guy named Ron Mercer, you mentioned him in the open. Foul called on Anthony Epps of Kentucky, the fourth against the Wildcats, number one on Epps. Kentucky. Nine steals for the Wildcats. Cricket's having an outstanding game. He is. If you're going to lob over a 6 9 guy, you better lob it. Here's Cricket inside. Turns on Witted. Pretty shot off the glass. Beautiful turnaround, right handed jump hook. Cricket can go either way with his right or left hand. And Spends a lot of time in personal improvement sessions at Kentucky working on these low post moves. Here you see Cricket, nice fake to one side, turns the other way, squares his shoulder, a little right-handed jump hook off the glass. Nice job. 13 points, eight rebounds for Jared Cricket. As he beats the press, they set it up on the half court, trailing 58-36. They've done a much better job in the second half of handling the ball against the full court Kentucky press. Bob it inside. Johnson driving baseline is fouled by Frickett. Frickett, a candidate for our VP best player of the game, will be selecting VP best player from each team. In addition to recognizing our two best players, Shane Williams hits. BP and his dealers will contribute $2,000 to the Southeastern Conference to be distributed among the member institutions, general scholarship funds, under a conference approved plan. Cricket from 18. Somebody got a piece. Was that Johnson that got a piece of it? I think it was. The official's going to confer, but it. crew will be able to show it to us right here. Let's see if Johnson did get a piece of it. Doesn't look like he did. I think Cricket just forced that shot under pressure. Let's see if it from this angle. Nope. I don't know. What do you think? I don't think he touched it. Hard to tell. Man. Just barely if he did. Catino's not concerned about that. He's concerned about how hard his team's playing. He's staying after him from the sideline. That's another silly reach-in foul by Rod Rhodes. He has four, and two of them have been of that reach-in variety with uh, no purpose at all. That's exactly right, Tom. And Rod Rhodes is an experienced player. He should know better than that. With three fouls on him, why would you try to reach in when you know the official's looking for something like that? I'm a little bit surprised that, uh, that he would have committed a foul like that. And Rick Pitino is going to talk to him over on that sideline, constantly teaching from the sideline, Rick Pitino.
better movement this half in the Tennessee offense. Good ball reversal. Good shot. cut there. Shot clock to six. Had a hard time finding shots. Two to shoot. Carnes forced it up. That's great defense right there by Kentucky in the half court. Defensive play by Aliko Dunk to knock it away. Tennessee's ball. Tennessee needs to look to penetrate a little bit here against this pressure. Tony Delk had a hold of Damon Johnson and his arm wrapped around him. He'll be called for that uh, hold. His first foul. But you see that the Johnson putting the ball on the floor looking to penetrate puts pressure on the defense and causes Tony Delk to have to foul him to shut him down in the lane. Hey, double right, four. Four's my guy. Seven uh, fouls against Kentucky this half, so for the final 8-21, Tennessee will shoot the bonus. Look at David Johnson, he is just worn out, I tell you. Really admire that young man. I, I want to correct myself. I think I said Damon Johnson's One, averaging 38 minutes a game. It's actually Shane Williams who's averaging 38 minutes a game. But I'll tell you, Damon Johnson has really played his heart out here, trying to defend the 6'9 inside players. He has scored 13. Kentucky up 58-40. Play by Kentucky trying to run a back screen for Walker. To get the action job that time. And so Prickett just simply turns and pops it through. Dunk didn't get the call after the flop, and Prickett got the easy one. Uh, but he got nominated for the Academy Award there. 15 for Jared Prickett. Chucky's hands very active on defense. Look at there. There's a perfect example right on cue. Tony Delk to Shepard. Nice play by Delk with a steal and the dish. Rick Patino teaches move the feet and use the hands to be active on the ball. Wildcats looking good with 7-11 left in the game and up 62-40. Time now for the Pizza Hut. You'll love this stuff. Play of the game. Well, Jared Prickett recognizes who he has on him, a six-foot guard, and he just simply squares the shoulders, turns around, nice, easy five-foot jumper, not worried about the shot being blocked, and he knocks it down. That young man's having an excellent game tonight. Jared Prickett out of West Virginia. 15 points and eight boards for Rick Pitino as Kentucky continues to get the good shots inside. They've hit 10 of 17 in the second half. That's 58 percent. Tennessee started hot, but has cooled off to six of 16. 38 percent have hit two of their last 12 shots. The Volunteers. And credit that Kentucky defense, very active on the ball, great hustle and effort. Uh, all the Kentucky players here tonight. <laughs> Dunk tried to penetrate, was cut off. Now Williams for three. Walker the board for the Wildcats. Cricket lost it out of bounds after Dunk had deflected the pass from Walker. Jared Cricket there, you see. Scoring. Average down this year from a year ago, 14 points a game last year, only five this year. Some other scores here now. South Carolina trailed early, but came back to win at home against Ole Miss by five. Vanderbilt, this is really a surprise That's a shocker to me. right there. Auburn is awfully tough at home, but Vanderbilt has gone in to take a big lead in the second half. Last time we checked in Baton Rouge, the Bulldogs were up 17 or 18, and the margin has been cut to 10 in the second half. 
Final column, final score uh, from Boston. Boston College beating Georgetown, 78-67. Johnson, who has 13 points, missed the free throw after the foul on Kentucky's Antoine Walker. Pope, triple team, headed back outside to Edwards. Just over six minutes left in the game. Dell pops a quick shot. Cricket kept it alive for a moment and it saved right into his hands. <laughs> Threw it to Tennessee. He tried to shoot it lane on the ground. That would have been a definitely an MCI proof positive shot. Switching on screens away from the ball. Five to shoot. Johnson does. Pretty moves. Left hand to lay it in. 15 points for Damon Johnson. Only their second field goal in the last eight minutes. Williams shoot that three. Passed it up. Crowd wanted him to shoot it too. Tennessee's just tired, Tom. That's all you can say. They are just flat and worn out. Kevin O'Neill still working from that sideline. These kids are still giving everything they've got. Just overmatched here tonight with Kentucky. Split it from Damon Johnson, who split a double team to get him the ball. David Johnson right there has had a great ball game tonight. Penetrated well, has scored, defended. Look at him catching his breath. I, tell you, I have a lot of admiration for that young man and really all these Tennessee players. They played very hard here. Delt from 15. A little curl cut off the screen away from the ball into the lane. Gets Delt open at the foul line. He has 15, one below his average. Five to eight off the bench in favor of the Wildcats. And Tennessee will take a timeout. Kevin O'Neill is still trying to get his point across to his troops. 4-16 left. Wildcats up 20. Well, here you see the replay of a Tennessee basket before Damon Johnson draws the double team from Pope. Pope leaves Witted to go double team and leaves him wide open for the slam dunk for Tennessee. Kevin Witted. Damon Johnson collecting his fourth assist on that play. He is the uh, Vols leader. Blocked by Pope as Johnson took it to the hoop. Good inside out there by Mark Pope. Tucker constantly looking inside on the post up. They don't have it, go kick it outside looking for the three. Constant movement in the offense. Bob to Delk made the good catch. Got the shot, tough shot. Tony Delk, who tonight has joined the 1,000 point club for Kentucky, the 42nd Wildcat to do that. He has 17. And to Rick Patino's credit here, Tom, he's pulled the press off. A little under four minutes to go, and his team is comfortably ahead. I think that says a lot about Rick Pitino, the fact that he would shut the press down at this stage of the game. Dunk was right under the basket, but knew the defense was there. Passed up for shot attempt. Johnson made a little space. Nice move. He plays really well tonight. Gave a penetrating sort of move, backed off, and hit the jumper for his 17th point. Delk made the good catch from Rob Rhodes. Good pass by Rhodes. Tony Delk is just so tough. Can do it all. Great defender, great athlete. He's in tremendous shape. Excellent condition, Tony Delk. It allows him to play a lot of minutes and be Kentucky's leading scorer. Barnes fell down, quickly got back up, kept the dribble going. Couldn't hit the shot, though, as Pope collars the rebound. Under the two and a half minute mark. Edwards lost it out of bounds. Chris Harrison comes in as Tony Delk is through for the night. 
Another fine performance by Tony Delk, the Wildcats leading scorer, topped his average with 17. You might base that assessment of it be the SEC's best guard on that performance in Fayetteville. 31 big points against the Razorbacks. No question. When you can go into Fayetteville and do something like that, you know you've got a lot of ability. Ball goes out of bounds to Kentucky. So, Tom, I'll tell you, the thing that I like so much about Kentucky's team is that they play hard all the time. Everybody that comes in off the bench gives maximum effort. It's one thing to be able to recruit talented players. It's another thing to get them to play hard all the time. And that's why I admire Rick Pitino so much, because his teams really play hard. One of the things people say is they don't have a real outstanding go-to guy. It's somebody one night, somebody else the next, as Johnson has it blocked by Pope. And then knocked out of bounds by Williams. But while that is somewhat true about Kentucky, that they don't have one dominant player, it's also a strength in that they have so many different ways they can beat you. Well, they do. Here's a guy off the bench, Mark Pope. Look at that rejection. Just great timing, extension of his body to get the block and not draw the foul. Smart play. And an unselfish team. Assists are always a key for Kentucky, averaging over 18 a game and 15 tonight. Harrison misses the three. Steve Hamer making an early exit. He left the game after playing only a minute, 15 seconds. The ball's leading scorer and rebounder out of the game with a dislocated left kneecap. These Tennessee players have continued to play hard, continued to battle. Barnes bricks the shot. Now in the final minute. Damon Johnson is worn out. He could barely make it into front court. He's had a career high scoring night, though. He's going to try to get two more. Jump stop. Got it. And he'll shoot one. Well, he's done it all night, and he continues to do it here in the last minute. Just blows by McCarty on the drive. Look at the muscle, the extension of his body using the glass to get two for the Vols. They may rename the city where he comes from. Johnson City. <laughs> Final seconds. For all intents and purposes, the game was over when Steve Hamer went out. Even though the Vols did have a seven-point lead after that. Superior numbers of the Wildcats. It's always tough for Kentucky to come to Knoxville and win, but with Hamer gone, it was an easy victory tonight for Rick Pitino. He and Kevin O'Neill shake hands over on the side. Already before the final horn has sounded, Pitino and O'Neill were talking at center court. So the final margin will be 20 as Kentucky posts the victory over the undermanned volunteers by a final score of 68 to 48. We'll return to Knoxville for some final comments after these messages from your local SEC station. Today's SEC action has been brought to you by Nationwide Insurance. Check the yellow pages for the Nationwide agent nearest you. By MCI, the company that brings you proof positive. And by Chrysler and the new Chrysler Cirrus Sports Sedan. So led by Jared Prickett, the Kentucky Wildcats rack up their 16th victory of the season against three defeats and go to 9-1 in SEC play with a 68-48 victory over Tennessee. Let's take a look at our BP best players for the game now. Off the Kentucky bench, Jared Prickett, 15 points and nine rebounds, just one board short of a double-double, hitting seven of his 10 shots. And for the Volunteers, Damon Johnson with a career-high 19 points on eight of 17 field goals. Jared Prickett of Kentucky, Damon Johnson of Tennessee are our BP best players for the game.
Well, we're told that Rick Pitino and his players refused to come out to talk to us after the game, so Joe and I will carry you through the remaining few minutes of this game right up to the top of the hour. Kentucky, as we said, uh, just coasting to victory here. For all intents and purposes, it was over when Hamer left the game. Well, there's no question. Without Hamer, Tennessee really just didn't have much of a chance, especially inside. Kentucky has about five guys that are 6'8 or better, and they just brought them in in waves. They went inside all night long. They were strong on the boards and, and did what they had to do to, to get a tough road win here in Knoxville. Kentucky uh, pounding the ball inside with that great size advantage tonight and ending up hitting 55% of their field goals, getting the good high percentage shots. One of the keys to victory, that along with their press, which uh, forced turnover after turnover, especially in the first half by Tennessee. We'll take a break and be back for more comments from Knoxville in just a moment.